Today I'm going to do a demonstration on how to install OpenShift on uh, Google Compute Engine. Uh, this is going to be a multi-node setup, so a little bit more complicated than the uh, demo that I did before where I used OC cluster up to just um, automatically set up a cluster on my local machine. Um, for developers, that's great, um, but if you want to try out something in a product in a more like a production environment, then uh, you, you may want to have multiple nodes. And so um, there is a tool out there called uh, the OpenShift Ansible installer that will help you do this. And this is going to be a demonstration of how that works. So um, here we've got the, this is the OpenShift Ansible installer here. Uh, we're going to start out by cloning that. So we're just going to grab this here. All right. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is go in here to the Ansible config, copy Ansible config example to Ansible config. We're going to go into the Ansible config file and look at what we have. So there's a number of uh, things here. Uh, GCE can even do a dynamic inventory script for this one. I'm going to use what's called the bring your own inventory here. Um, and that will uh, expose some of the things that it's doing. Um, but I think it'll be more informative to do it this way. So uh, I'm going to do that. And so you, we can note this uh, path here, inventory slash BYO slash hosts. So we're going to, uh, we're going to go inventory. Uh, bring your own. And if you look in here, there's a couple of example files. If you go into hosts origin example, um, let me try to extend this here. All right. um, you, you can go down here and see that there are a ton of options that you can set. Uh, I mean, OpenShift is very tunable, and this is pretty much all the tunables there are. Um, I'm not going to go over all of those. Uh, I'm going to try to go with a minimal host file here. So I'm going to open up a host file and then I've got a gist here that has a configuration that I've already made. So um, I'm going to start up instances in GCE. When I do that, um, the user it sets up for me is the, the same as the SSH key that I've pre-registered with my account. So um, the user that I'm going to log into the nodes in is, uh, is S Jennings. Um, but I can do a sudo and become root. And so this is that tells uh, Ansible that you can just sudo as this user and it'll it'll just work. Um, the deployment type here I've set to origin. It can also be OpenShift Enterprise if uh, you're doing this on RHEL, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use origin on CentOS. Uh, we're also going to do a containerized install. And this is the tag that we're the container tag that we're going to be pulling from the Docker Hub, which is 1.3.1, which is the uh, currently the latest stable version. This tells it to install the uh, the example templates, and that'll give us something to deploy on this uh, OpenShift cluster once we get it installed. Here for the uh, identity provider, uh, there's lots of uh, identity providers for OpenShift, but for the demonstration purposes here, I'm just going to use um, one of the basic ones, which is the uh, HT password auth. And here I'm, I've just got a demo user, and this is the hashed password for demo. So demo demo is the user that we're creating um, by default. Here we're saying uh, our OpenShift router, which I'll explain a little bit later, uh, should be deployed onto um, the node with the region labeled infra. And that's going to be our infra node here. You can see that OpenShift node labels the region infra. That means that this the, the OpenShift router is going to be deployed to this node every time. And we're doing going to do the same thing for the registry. And then for all uh, projects that are created by users, um, we're going to say we want those uh, pods deployed to nodes that have region equals primary set. So we've got basically worker nodes here and then a an, an special infrastructure node here. Here we list the masters. This is a domain that I own, and you'll see I'm going to update the DNS here in a little bit um, so that you can have nice names for everything. Um, one thing is if you don't set this, it's going to default to the IP address, uh, the, the public IP address of the instance in the cloud, um, which you may or may not want. It, it, that works every time, but not many people are going to remember the IP address of their master. 
So if you want a, a DNS resolvable pub, uh, public host name, you have to provide it here. Um, if the um, DNS name of the master doesn't have a reverse lookup. So um, here under nodes, we still have to put the master here so that the master can be part of the SDN. That's just the way uh, the software defined network that OpenShift sets up. Uh, that's just I can. That's just the way it has to be. And then here are our actual nodes. The master will be added as a node, but it will be not not schedulable by default, um, since in a multi-node setup, you typically don't want the master running um, pods. So that explains that. We're going to take all this and paste it in here. Make sure that, that happened. All right. So um, the next thing we got to do is we got to uh, pre-create our instances here. So I'm going to do this on Google Cloud Platform, the GCE Compute Engine. So um, if you've got a Google account, you can get a GCE account with a $300 initial credit for free. So that's actually what I'm using here. I've already signed up, so I can't show you that process. But this, you, you'll come to this um, if you go in here and you go to Compute Engine. This is the page that comes up. So we're going to create an instance. Uh, we're going to create several instances. First, we're going to create a master. Uh, I like to use the uh, one CPU, 3.75 gigs of memory. Um, the master doesn't need a whole lot of memory unless you're running a large cluster. So um, this works well enough here. Here we're going to go CentOS 7. Uh, also in here, uh, I'm going to do an SSD persistent disk. It's a little bit more expensive, but you get better Perform disk performance and since uh, containers in general are disk intensive, it's worth it there, in my opinion. So we're going to do that. Um, the next, so one more thing we're going to do is I'm going to tag this with master, and I'll show you why later. And then we'll go create. All right, then we'll create another one. This is going to be our infra node. Uh, it's the same size there. Same disk, CentOS 7. Then we're going to add a tag um, infra. Create that. And then we're going to create our two nodes, node 1. We're going to make the nodes a little bigger since they're going to actually be running the pods. Uh, do that, do that. Sure, great. Uh, actually, I'll have to go back to node 1. It, and remove the infra tag. It saves those from creation to creation. You have to remove it if you don't want it on the next one. Node two. All right, then back here. No infra tag. Create. Okay, so we have the we have the foundation of our cluster here. Let me go into node one, edit it, and we want to remove Where's the tags. Oh, here it is. Infra. Remove that tag. All right. We'll save that. And then once we have that saved, um, we need to, for, for me, I set up DNS uh, so that I don't have to do this by IP address and it makes it a little cleaner. It also makes the routes that we're going to set up later uh, more human readable friendly. So uh, here I'm going to open up uh, here and go into networking. To save time, I've already created the zone here. Let's go to Cloud DNS. Um, while we're here, let me look at the firewall rules. So the reason we tagged the infra node and the master node with those infra and master tags was here. Um, so for the infrastructure node, we want to pass through port 80 and and uh, 443, so that's HTTP and HTTPS, uh, because it's going to be running the OpenShift router, which is going to be listening on those ports for the load balancer. And then for the master, the master console runs on uh, 8443, so we want to pass that through. And then, so setting those tags on the instances uh, allow these firewall rules to apply to them. If we go to Cloud DNS, I've added my domain here. Um, and I've got records for each of the things. Uh, because I was using ephemeral IP addresses before, I need to update this, so I will show you how to do that. Um, 
I'm going to try to do that quickly here because it's a little tedious, but we'll just copy that. That's infra. Come in here. Set that. Master. This is node one. Okay, looks like that didn't actually change. And node two. Okay, so let's double check this. Five, four, one, six, three, two, five, two, one, oh, seven. Okay, so um, if we come here and we do ping master, all right, we're getting our res resolution there 163, 163, that's what we want. Okay, then there's one down here. Uh, this will come up later, and this was in, um, if, we go, if I go back to my gist here. You can see that I've uh, set up the router default subdomain to be origin.sjings.me, uh, and that matches uh, this wildcard DNS. So uh, basically, I can create routes in OpenShift, uh, and they will always be directed to the infra node where the router is running. OK, so we got DNS set up. We got all that set up. OK. so. We've got our host file here. I'm going to go back to um, our OpenShift Ansible. And, I'm, and uh, from here, now that we've got the nodes set up and uh, everything configured, we're ready to deploy, actually deploy OpenShift. So the command for that is Ansible um, Playbook. And we're going to use Playbook, bring your own, config.yaml is what we want to run. So I'm going to hit that. And, and this will take a while. Um, it'll, it's basically SSHing into all of the nodes and uh, the nodes and the master and configuring everything. So this could take, depending on the speed of your connection and how fast the cloud is on any particular day, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna cut here and then at the end, I'll show you at the end and then log into the console, deploy a sample app, and we can see that it's all working. Okay, so that completed. That took about uh, 15 to 20 minutes on my box. So i uh, just give you a ex expected time there. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is log into the master node. And uh, if you want to do anything um, at the cluster admin level, uh, you need to do this. The demo user that we set up is just a normal user, doesn't have any cluster level uh, roles. But um, if you do, it, uh, if I log into the master, uh, the installer has installed the client utilities for me and um, set my cube config right. So uh, if I do OC git nodes, we can see all the nodes here. So here's the master. It's a node, but it's uh, scheduling disabled so that uh, pods won't be deployed to it. Here's our infra node and then our two worker nodes. So um, if you want to do anything at a cluster admin level, you have to do it from the command line or grant uh, cluster level roles to uh, a user that you create. Um, so if we come over here and we go to HTTPS um, master Dot. Um, there we go. So it uses a self-signed cert uh, in the installer to um, secure among all the components and, and for the web console. So you'll have to you know, accept that. Um, and then login is the user that we specified in the uh, Ansible installer inventory file, which was demo demo. And our cluster is running. So we can even deploy uh, a new project here. So let's make a demo project and come in here and we can do this cake PHP um, MySQL example. So that'll deploy a pod and we'll test to make sure that our uh, 
build pipeline is working that uh, it will pull pull down code from GitHub, build it, cr- create a uh, container image, push that to the internal registry, and then deploy it to our nodes. So uh, we don't actually have to change anything there. You can scroll straight to the bottom and hit create. Uh, and if we go back to the main console here, you can see that it is that it's building things. So MySQL, it just pulls that image straight down from Docker Hub, so that will deploy quickly. And then the uh, cake uh, MySQL example actually has to build from source. So we can uh, go look at the log on that. We should see it uh, cloning the repository and building the image here. It shouldn't take too long. And this is one of the really nice things about OpenShift, especially the web console. Um, it gives you a lot of information about what's going on and you can uh, de- do do lots of debugging. Uh, in this particular install, we didn't do install the metrics or the logging uh, facilities for uh, OpenShift, but uh, those can also be deployed from the Ansible installer as well as a cloud provider integration with AWS, GCE, and uh, OpenStack, uh, which can provide additional functionality that uh, OpenShift can kind of reach down into the cloud layer and do things automatically for you, which is pretty nice. So right now, so this is our internal uh, image registry here. This is the OpenShift image registry. And so it pulled down the source from GitHub, uh, built the PHP application, and now it's uh, it created the, uh, the container, basically doing a Docker build inside, the, inside this builder container, and it has pushed the container to our internal registry. And so if we come out to the overview again, um, We've got our deployer running and we should see this pod come up here pretty soon. This, uh, this deployment actually has a, um, a liveness probe on it. So it won't, it won't actually show as ready on the dashboard until it is actually responding to requests. So if we look at this, our pod is up now and this is where the origin.sjings.me wildcard DNS uh, can't, can't comes up. This is so by default it names it the name of the uh, the name of the service and the project and then w- whatever we set there in that Ansible install. So if I hit that, you can see that our application is up and running and the view count is two. Even though I've only viewed this page once, it's counting the view counts from the uh, from the uh, health monitoring and the liveness probe. So. So that is a way to install OpenShift uh, in a four node cluster in GCE. If you haven't done the free trial with GCE yet, then all this is for free as well. So uh, hopefully you give that a try and uh, give it, and just uh, explore what OpenShift can do for you.